good morning. Uh, we are embarking upon this uh, uh, study, uh, this message now, and uh, uh, we've been dissecting uh, Matthew chapter 23, uh, in the will of the Lord, trying to find some help in it all. Uh, so the the chapter is uh, wise uh, destruction instructions, and then it's divided up in uh, uh, which we looked at already. Wisdom revealed verses one to twelve, and last week woes related uh, thirteen to thirty-three, and now uh, today it's warnings rejected verses thirty-four to thirty-nine, and so we uh, hope that we be able to by the power of the Holy Holy Spirit to understand something and to take note of the warnings. Uh, it's still at the, the temple area, this uh, uh, a replica of the old uh, uh, temple. Uh, we think uh, uh, something like Solomon's um, a temple, and uh, uh, it's quite some, not, not anything like Herod's temple, of course, that's uh, was there in the time of Jesus, um, and so uh, warnings rejected. We're thinking of verses 34 to 39, and we're dividing it up: the introduction, of course, the uh, compassion, concern, confusion, and lastly the conclusion. the uh, The main text of this uh, passage is, of course, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. So uh, it is very uh, moving, very challenging, and I'm sure uh, our Lord uh, said those words with great uh, feeling and emotion, uh, you know, uh, at this time. And uh, that one of those times where he was very mournful and maybe even shedding tears, but I'm sure there were tears uh, inwardly, you know, tears in his soul. So the introduction. Uh, who has been sent? And that, of course, there in verse 34, well, it's uh, the, uh, the prophets, the teachers of old, like uh, uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah and others, um, you know, uh, who were sent uh, to bring a special message. And they brought a special message to the nation, to the people, you know, and oftentimes it was at very serious times. You know, so uh, that was, of course, the past sending, those who were sent in the past, in the Old Testament times, you know. And then the present sending. Of course, he has been calling the disciples to go and to bring the message of the gospel. And uh, he later on will be choosing out, uh, he chooses out the uh, 12 and uh, even 70 others. And of course, it goes on that others too, uh, that when we come to personal faith in Christ as Christians, then of course, with their challenges for us then to uh, where it can be sent. Uh, and uh, when we are specifically sent, that is of course to do a full-time work for the Lord. But anyway, that is it. And of course, the prophets and teachers uh, in Acts 13, 1 and 2, were um, prayed over, and the Holy Spirit has said to separate Barnabas and Paul, Saul, to the work. And uh, then, of course, some later on, Silas and others people were added on. Many more are added on, Timothy, and uh, of course, there it was. So it was really, uh, that's how um, these uh, uh, workers progressed, you know. But... Uh, and the greatest prophet, of course, of all is Jesus. A uh, prophet that says, in Acts, the Lord your God will raise up for you among your brethren, among your people. And that is, uh, was amazing. And of course, pointing that he fulfilled the office of a prophet, uh, of course, a priest and king too, but 
uh, that one particular, you know. And so uh, they're responsible really for persecution. And they're going to persecute the persecuted days. We saw already the, the um, uh, prophets and, and people in the past. And the persecuted, uh, they're persecuted now. They will be soon persecuting. And they are, uh, you know, uh, giving Jesus a very hard time. And of course, you'll see when it comes to the trial, uh, that will be quite, quite something, you know. So it is very sad, you see. But you see, um, many were persecuted uh, in um, the early times in the Book of Acts and uh, there in that historical part, you know, and the start of the church. So they were. Uh, they suffered greatly for their faith. It wasn't easy. It wasn't simple to become a Christian. You had to be firm and be convinced that this was the truth. Uh, that God was uh, asking people to declare. And so uh, we go on then to the compassion. The compassion. Really, the compassion Jesus had. You know, it's it's mournful, you know. Oh, I'm sure when you say, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And I have said it with great feeling and emotion. Very mournful, very sad, because he's crying over Jerusalem because of the way it has gone uh, and that they're not listening to the message. You know, it's, it's conclusive too, you see. It's not just for Jerusalem, but it's for all other areas, all other nations and countries, not just the nation of Israel, but the nations all round about. And you might think, uh, laugh at the Jews and, and think, well, they might, uh, just, you know, they deserve it. But, uh, yes, we're all in the same boat, you know. We've all, we're all, a fa it's a fallen world and uh, it's conclusive, this. And so he could be crying over Mullingar. He's crying over, uh, you know, London, England, the way it's gone. And the terrible things that they, they have done. And uh, Northern Ireland and... Uh, here, uh, our own country too as well. Have we passed laws that are in keeping with the word of God, you know, and uh, and these things? That's what you have to think about and challenge about. So it's conclusive. It takes us all in. Uh, we are responsible for it, you see. And God does care. He cares deeply, very much. He's truly concerned for people that they may turn to him. And, and uh, it's in deep compassion he sent his son, you know, he nearest and his dearest, uh, uh, and he sent him to be a prophet, to be uh, one who would uh, be an apostle and, and uh, one to bring the gospel. And he loved us so much to do that, you know. And of course, Jesus was there to convey the true heart of God. If you want to know what God the Father is like, it's all there are revealed in Jesus. He is the true replica and a mirror image of his Father in heaven. Anything you want to know about uh, God and the Father in heaven, all about God, is there revealed in Jesus. And so it's important to think about that, you know, and to understand that and to pray about that. But that's his real work, what he's doing. And God has no pleasure to see the death bits. He has no pleasure to see these things happening and the terrible uh, plight of the world today. And it's awful. Um, you know, uh, I can't quite uh, grasp and think. And I can't bring it to mind, really. But the number of deaths is just quite astounding. And so, uh, you know, he was very serious, you know, he said, you know. John eleven thirty five. That's the shortest verse in the Bible. Two words. Jesus wept. Where was he? He was outside the tomb of Lazarus, where Lazarus was buried. Four days. Buried. And of course, he came. And he prayed to his father in heaven. But you know, before that, he, he wept. 
because you see we had brought this upon us we shouldn't have shouldn't have been you see and all the suffering and the pain and the COVID and ever these things it's all brought upon us we're responsible for it and and God has no pleasure to see the death to see our loved ones being, uh, you know, and we cannot maybe go to bury them, but uh, die. How may terrible. You know, God gave us a beautiful world free of COVID-19. There was no disease and nothing happening in it at all like that. And so they were all good, a uh, uh, you know, uh, genes and uh, perfect. And we spoiled this, his beautiful world. We spoiled it. And all that came in then. You know. Yes, of course, we, we listen to the old enemy, the devil, you see. But we do that all the time, don't we? And we, when we want our own thing and our own way. He has promise to restore it though yes he's made a great promise and you can read about it more and more in the good word of God that he will make a new heaven and new earth he has promised to restore it no doubt about it and he's coming back to do that and so that is great news but will we take heed you might say oh that's fine well let's see how he'll do it you know that's great but friends it's only those who are trusting in him who have repented of their sins and, and believing in the lord jesus christ will inherit this you know i hope you are making a preparation for that we don't know how soon we'll be on our way to it It will be at no cost to us. No. He ha has paid for it all and opened the way. He paid the price of our sin. And that uh, will give us entry into the new world. And it will be at no cost at all. Because you see, it's, 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 it's spiritual. It's Jesus doing it all himself. He said he paid a debt he did not owe. He, he, he said it's the payment of a debt, you know, there on the cross. It is finished. And they had paid the debt of our sin. And we hope, D.V., to see it later. I hope you're looking forward to that. And we'll see something about in the next chapter uh, about this, all this that's happening then. And uh, a little understanding further about it from the heart of Jesus. So we hope, B.V., to see that uh, later in the will of the Lord. The Jerusalemites are not willing, though. They don't want it. They want their own way. They don't want this man to rule over them. They don't want his wonderful, you know, he was... The people heard them so wonderfully, but the religious leaders didn't like it because they're upsetting their little world. And if he upsets your little world, then it's sad. And we must turn to him in faith and believe his message and what he's done. It's for our benefit. It's for our blessing. It's for our good. And then we leave the compassion. Com Compassion we go on to see the concern. And Jesus can shed tears, you know. Yeah. Oh yes. He he was often very deeply moved, as we said already, uh, at the 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 uh, to burial place of Lazarus. He he said, Oh they they thought when the people seen him, you know, they thought uh, uh, weeping they thought oh how he loved him but you know it was because he was weeping because we had brought this awful pain and death and all this upon us that's what he was weeping for 
But you know, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He was going to make a way through it. Why did Jesus shed great drops of blood? That was quite something. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was taken to be crucified, there's where he was arrested and betrayed by one of his near followers, Judas Iscariot. There in that garden, he prayed, you know, to, for this cup of suffering to pass. And there in great agony, he shed great drops of blood on the ground. It was seen. This Dr. Luke uh, really is the one who, who shows it, who, who talks about it so much. Because he's a doctor and he understands these many things, you know. That's happening. What is Jesus is going through? Because it's a picture of, you know, psycholo physical suffering, psychological suffering, and the deepest mental suffering that beyond any suffering that anyone could have. He suffered greater and more than any man because he was suffering for us. And there it's in Luke 20, uh, 22 verse 44, you know. Quite something. You know, those, there was even uh, tears, uh, great drops of blood seen, literally. That was terrible. And it showed so much. His agony, you know, his sweat. You know, he, he agonized so terribly. He, 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 he came out in a red sweat and it began to drop great drops of blood. That shows very, very deep agony and pain and suffering. Really, in the very depths of his being, psychologically, you know, that is emotionally, uh, mentally, the deepest ever that one could. And it's rare for a person, uh, a human being, uh, to, to encounter this. And, of course, in this particular uh, portion we have here, it's a great illustration, you know, uh, this, this, this hen with her chicks, you know, that Jesus uses. He uses those great uh, examples and illustrations of everyday life that really gets across what he's meaning and what he's trying to, to get into our minds and our hearts. Why does a hen gather chicks under her wings? Well, you know, there's a, uh, for fear, maybe the hawk or something is going over or something's happened and it's for protection. It's for uh, comfort. And she cares so much for her chicks. How amazing, you know, it is. But it's a great picture here that Jesus uses of the hen gathering her chicks under her wings. Amazing illustration, you know, there you see her. And it's quite something. And is it possible, you know, it's so, so, so amazing that they so care for their little brood. The National Ge Geographic uh, paper relates of a forest fire in Yellowstone National Park in 1989. Now, the rangers, after the fire, the rangers assess the damage. And they were walking up, of course, they, they, um, into the forest. And one ranger, he found a bird literally petrified in ashes. It was perched statuesquely on the ground. That means it was, it was there in its shape, in a statue form, on the ground at the base of a tree. How amazing, wasn't that? Somewhat sickened by the eerie sight, he knocked over the bird with his stick. And what happened? When he struck it, three tiny chicks scurried from under their dead mother's wings. You know, we have heard the story of the red hen, but it's, it's a great illustration of the farmer who... who you know, had a fire in his yeah, farmyard. But I think it's just a story that they reckon that's not 
uh, factual, but here's this is fact. So the mother bird gave her life to protect her brood, died, shriveled up, and held it there. She could have flown off, but she stayed with her chicks uh, to protect them, and they survived amazingly. And so it's a picture of what? What do we see this as a picture of? That's what's important about this, isn't it? Well, what Jesus has done for us. There on the cross of Calvary. He has taken our place. We should have been there. We deserve to be there. But he went, was hung on the cross for that time, uh, you know, to pay the price of our sin. They took the punishment that we deserve. He gave his life for us. Amazing. He gave up his life voluntarily and completely. It was a perfect sacrifice because he was the only perfect one. Anyone, you know, could could uh, try and die to save someone, but th- that would only be saving them physically. But here is physically and spiritually salvation, you know, for for the future. And the just, he died the just for the unjust to bring us to God. That's we read in 1 Peter, read Peter. Uh, he uh, penned that, directed by God to put that down. But he was, he, he, Jesus was the just one. We are the unjust and the only the reason was to bring us to God. What does that mean? To reconcile us. To make us right with God. And then we have the connection. You know, there's a great verse here uh, that we have. And uh, why an innocent person really is the question had to suffer. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, the whole day long. For Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. And there's the second verse again, the same, you know. And so wonderful that Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That is so wonderful. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Uh, and he did that, you see. Again, the one who had no sin took on our sin on himself. It didn't affect him. You know, he still was perfect, but it was to make us in the right with God, to give us a a, a new life in him. (coughs) Because if any man is in Christ, then he's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And so it's faith in Jesus, then, you see. Faith in his finished work. Faith that he paid the price of our sin on the cross. God connects and reconciles us to himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is it. We have to be reconnected. You know. You know all that about electricity and and if there's a fault it has to be, uh, you know, made good. The engineer has has to reconnect it. And so he, Jesus, is the great heavenly engineer. To reconnect us because it's physical, it's spiritual in our souls to be reconnected back to God. That is the great thing. And we hope you can think about that and realize that and appropriate it in your life. And the conclusion then. What is the big question? What's the 64 million dollar question you know what's important to your life 
and to my life. That is the great thing. That is what's so important. Are you willing, you know, for this? Are you willing? We, we read about people who are not willing. Those people of Jerusalem, those leaders particularly, were not willing. And Jesus knows whether you're willing or not willing. He knows uh, and he, he, where you stand with him. Jesus says, but you are not willing. He could see into the hearts and lives of them, you know. He knew who could believe in him, who wouldn't. And of course, he didn't commit himself onto them, only those who trust in him. And so Jesus says, but you are not willing. How oh, that must have been hurt him deeply. The one who made this world, the one who put it all together, you know, at the command from his Father in heaven. The one who came to save us, to live amongst us. Oh, how deep it must have. No wonder he, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He was so concerned. Are you concerned about your life? Where you're going? Where you spend eternity. Will you be ready for that big event at the end? When he comes back again? Maybe you laugh at it and don't believe it. You know, Pilate said to them at, his, at uh, Jesus' trial, he, he uh, you know, questioned him, uh, cross-questioned him, and wanted to discourage him and and they said, took him out then and says, here is your king. What did they say? They called for Caesar. Caesar's our king, our ruler. And they rejected Jesus. That was terrible, wasn't it? That was awful. That was the one who came to save. And they have. They rejected him. Away with him. Crucify him, we'll hear later on if we, in the will of the Lord, get to that. You know. How terrible. How awful that they were. You know. And Jesus looked upon them. He thought about this area. Matthew 23, 30. Behold, he says, Your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And what is all that, you say? Well, you know, that's speaking of when he comes again. And this place has been left desolate. The, the temple has been taken down and burned by the Babylonians. And the people were taken into exile because they disobeyed God. And the, there is the Dome of the Rock in its place. And the Jews had liked to build a, a, a temple up uh, the other side of that, you know. Perhaps on that side, I'm not sure. And, uh, well, but somehow there, they'd like to do that, the third temple. But that, of course, wouldn't be right, would it? So... Yes, it's a promise that he's coming again. And are we ready for that big event? That is the greatest event of your life and mine. <gasps> we need to be ready, you know. And that's by repenting and putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, no, it's so amazing. It's so wonderful, you know. So many are so sad and parents are so concerned for their families and their friends and the loved ones, and the children, you know, praying for them, uh, and uh, how amazing, you know. But that is the only hope in Jesus. And that is the great thing. So, warnings rejected. It's sad finishing there, isn't it, with that? But there's a challenge in it all for us to listen. Will we take note of it? Will we listen? Made the warnings now. Right now, God is speaking to us through this COVID. 
through many other things uh, he is speaking to us. He's been speaking through the various fires that have taken place to as well. We are to listen to his word, but if we don't listen to his word, then he'll speak in other ways. He use circumstances. And we may not like it, but that's it. And we hope that we take note of it. Listen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. There's a blessing for him. Yes. We'll see. All those who, who, who see him there in the end, that's what they'll say on their lips. Or will you say it believingly and trusting in him? Will you be ready for that event? That will be when there's a, people are raised up and he calls all those who love to follow and to be up to heaven to be with him. Where are you going to be? And so, blessed is he that, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes, Jesus return Again. For to bring us into his new world. And his new heaven and new earth. You can read about it in the Bible, especially in Revelation uh, 21 and 22. It's real there. And so we want to thank you for uh, listening. We want to thank you for uh, following on on this. And we pray that God will indeed bless you. And let's pray. Our gracious and our mighty God, we thank you for your, we thank you for your love to us, so rich and so free. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon each one of us. We ask, O oh Lord, your lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We pray your blessing, and O oh Lord, we pray that you will guide. We think of the great trial there is in our land right now. We think, Lord, uh, the, and we pray your hand upon each one. And we do remember those who need our prayers at this time. We pray uh, particularly for uh, a young fellow called Ezra. And we ask, O oh Lord, Ezra Nugent, we ask, O oh Lord, your hand upon him as he travels out to Syria uh, for the peacekeeping. We pray, Lord, you will lead and guide in his life. And we ask, Lord, your blessing and others there. Uh, with him. We pray, Lord, your hand upon the whole uh, Nugent family too as well. We pray your blessing. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We ask your blessing and we pray that you will be with us now and we pray, Lord, your leading. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen.